Hi everyone, this is Kimo Honor, and uh, today we will be reviewing the most essential concepts that you need to know before your upcoming test in a couple of days. Um, <clears throat> your test will mainly be on concepts covered in chapter 13 um, on fluids, as well as chapter 14. Um, in mechanical oscillations. <clears throat> now, um, in class, prior to the exam, you need to submit um, this literal survey uh, before the test. Let's get started. The very first question has to do with water in a very large tank. Now, there is a hole There is a hole at the bottom of the tank in which the water is discharged. The height of the tank is H and the tank is actually sitting on a table at a height of H over 2 above the surface, above the ground. Now the very first question says, derive an expression for the velocity of the water at the bottom of the tank in terms of H and fundamental constants. So let's choose, let this position be one, that is the very top of the water, and this position be two. Then Bernoulli's principle demands ours that P1 plus rho G Y1 plus one half rho v one squared will be equal to p two plus rho g y two plus one half rho v two squared. Now we are going to assume that. The top of the water is at rest, so V1 is equal to 0. Now both, or if both openings are open to A, meaning that P1 is equal to P2, which is equal to the atmospheric pressure. This will therefore indicate that um, <coughs> Rho G Y1 will be equal to Rho G Y2 plus one half Rho V2 squared. In other words, V2 squared will be equal to 2G bracket Y1 minus Y2. But what do we know? But y1 minus y2 is just the height of the tank. Therefore, we can say that v2 is the square root of 2g h. And that will be the velocity at the bottom of the tank. Now, the next question wants us to calculate to determine how long it will take for the water level in the tank to drop to 0 0.5 h from the bottom of the tank. This is quite an interesting problem. Um, first of all, we will assume that one water is incompressible meaning that the amount of water in the tank is equal to the difference between the amount of water in poured into the tank and the amount of water leaving the tank So 
So the water, the mound M water in the tank, I'm going to call this MT, is equal to M in minus M out. Where, <clears throat> where MT represents the amount of water in the tank at T M represents the amount of water poured into the tank and M out represents the amount of water out of the tank. So essentially we know that dmt divided by dt will be equal to dm in over dt minus dm out over dt. But no water is poured into the tank, which means that this is zero. Hence, we can therefore write the rate at which the water decreases in the tank is equal to negative dm out over dt. But M out is equal to rho V out, the volume of water discharged, which is the same as rho multiplied by A2 times <coughs> X2. This would mean that the M out over DT will be equal to rho A2 dx2 over dt, which is just rho a2 v2. So, <clears throat> similarly, m tank is rho v tank which is going to be rho A of tank multiplied by H. Therefore, dmt over dt will be equal to rho AT dh over dt. Hence, we can see that rho a t d h over d t is equal to negative rho a two v two. This cancels off with that. So this means that a t divided by a one d h over d t will be equal to sorry this is a two will be equal to negative the square root of two g h in other words. dh divided by the square root of 2 gh is equal to negative a2 divided by at multiplied by dt which implies if we take the integrals of both sides 
from 0 to t. This is now from h to 0 0.5 h. We will end up with 1 over root 2g, the integral of h to h over 2 dh divided by the square root of h, which is equal to negative a2 divided by at, the integral from 0 to t of dt, which can be written as negative 1 over root 2g, the integral from 0 to h over 2, h 1 half, negative 1 half dh equal to negative a2 a of t the integral from 0 to t dt so um, <clears throat> we will have here 1 over root 2 gh bracket h 2h raised to the power 1 half from 0 to h over 2 will be equal to a2 over a t multiplied by t. In other words, t will be equal to a of t divided by a2, the square root of 2g, all divided by, there is a 2 here, the square root of h divided by 2. We can simplify this further to be equal to a of t divided by a2 bracket The square root of 4h divided by 4g, which means that that t will be equal to a t divided by a2 the square root of h over g. Now the next question is to determine the horizontal distance traveled by the water. It means we need to calculate this distance D. When the water shoots out of the tank, it becomes a projectile, and we we know that we know that V O Y is zero, A Y is negative G, V O X is gonna be. 2gh ax is going to be 0. Now y naught is going to be 0. x naught is going to be 0. So we are assuming that this is our origin. If that is the case, we will have negative y equal to 0, negative 1 half gt squared, which means that the time of flight t will be equal to the square root of 2h over g. Similarly, x will be equal to 0 
plus x will be equal to v o x t plus zero which is just going to be the square root of 2 g h multiplied by 2 h over g so we can simplify x will be equal to the square root of 2 g h multiplied by 2 h over g g cancels off with g so x remembers that this is actually y y y and in this case y is one half h so x will be equal to the square root of 4h multiplied by h over 2 which is just going to be root 2h and that will be our x this means that d is equal to root 2h now v2 mm -hmm. is the square root of 2g h which is the square root of 2 10 meters per second multiplied by 5 meters that will give us 10 meters per second this is v2 now d is root 2 h which is going to be 5 root 2 meters thank you for your time um, see you in the next problem